Hello, my name is Dr. Norbert Ranacci and I'm going to explain you now how to use the needleless electrospinning. So this setup is a home-built electrospinning setup I built with my team and this is good for scaling up uh, systems because instead of using a needle or a nozzle it uses a rotating cylinder or a coil or a sphere as you will see. So usually when you want to use this setup you find it in the following state. So the rotating electrospinning electrode and the solution bath is usually not inside because each user needs to wash it after use. So maybe, so probably you can find it uh, around the sink area in G119A. We also have three different sizes. So we have the small, the small volume, which uh, is uh, advised if you want to use something that is very expensive. It uh, takes around one milliliter volume the medium uh, volume which takes about 20 milliliter and the large volume which if i remember correctly can take around 80 milliliters so you can see that this uses coils so here you don't need to use as high voltage as with the cylinder one or as with the spherical one so let's see now how to turn this on and how to uh, perform electrospinning well actually it's pretty simple so you get the bath and you first need to put in the teflon solution bath so you simply you can open this totally by using this lever you can open it fully and you simply put it inside so the hole faces the motor the dc motor that we rotate our collector so let's put in the Teflon bath with the largest volume for the solution. As this setup is designed for high throughput production, you might uh, want to use uh, this electrode. So first you need to take out the electrode, this coil electrode and the coupler. And you need to place only the Teflon bath so you don't break the glass. Once you have done it, you need to put the Teflon rod into the hole of the Teflon bath because uh, this Teflon rod is connected to this DC motor that will rotate your electrode. Then you can have the electrode and put it through this uh, loop. Uh, this loop is giving the positive high voltage. Uh, the shaft of the electrodes are different in sizes, so you might need to adjust the inner diameter of this loop. You can do it simply by twisting it a few times into the correct direction to make it smaller or bigger. Best is to take it off with a screwdriver from this high voltage lead. And then you can make sure that you can adjust this copper loop to the size of the electrode. It's very important that this copper loop is touching the electrode very well, preferably as many places as possible. So make sure that you rotate it a few times when you, after you put it on. You just need it half turn and then you can put it in and connect the high voltage. When you put in uh, the electrode you always put uh, this end first and then you will deal with uh, the coupler and the other end. If it's a bit loose as it is loose now you can use some parafilm to make it tighter. So I just cut a piece of parafilm and I'm putting this parafilm here at the end to make sure that the coupler will be tight and it can rotate especially with this electrode it's important that you have a tight connection to the teflon rod because the weight of the electrode is quite high and you just simply rotate it and it's good now So I place that end first, good, and then I will attach the high voltage. If the high voltage cable is not long enough, you can pull it through the hole and then you can attach it. Okay. And then once this is done, you can turn the system on and you should check whether the electrode is rotating and whether the high voltage loop is touching the metal part 
of the electrode correctly. You can turn on all the electronics simply by turning on this and this and this. So you can hear now that uh, and see that it's rotating and you can see whether or not the connection to the DC motor by the Teflon rod is okay. So if you can see it's revolving slowly, then it is working fine. So now we are done with the bottom part. The high voltage is connected, the DC motor is connected, the electrode is rotating. Now let's go to the collector part where we have the negative DC voltage coming. So this cable here is the negative DC voltage and this needs to touch the collector all the time. You can turn on the collector simply once you have voltage here, so now it's 12 voltage, simply by turning on this uh, pot meter and you can adjust the speed by this lever. If you don't need the line fibers, I would suggest you to use it in a lower RPM setting. And while it is rotating, you can also adjust your high voltage cable, make sure that it's off the high voltage, but also we have an interlock, so in principle it should be off all the time. So now it's touching all the time and it's also not touching the aluminum foil that has been already installed here. Uh, you don't need an aluminum foil, you can also collect your electrospan material directly on this uh, aluminum bar, but it's better to collect it in the aluminum foil. So now the connection is good. I would say it's good if uh, you can see that it's touching it all the time and there is some spring force from the electrode to it. So now the next step is to put in your solution. As a demonstration, I just, uh, I'm just using now water, but this should be your polymer solution for the electrospinning. So you just very carefully pour it around the electrode. Usually I pour it where the high voltage electrode is attaching. So now both high voltage is connected and both motors are rotating, but the high voltage power supplies are still off. The next step is to put on the lid. This very heavy safety lid is usually around the setup and you need to put it in the following method. You need to put it to this end and make sure that the interlock switch is pushed down so the high voltage can be on. If you need to use uh, hot air or just a normal airflow, you can connect uh, these swage lock connections to this. You can also uh, remove these if they are in the way simply by turning this up, you can remove these uh, suction handles. So now the setup is uh, in principle ready for operation and we can turn on the high voltage. The high voltage power supplies are below this box. You turn on the positive by simply rotating this rod and turn on the negative by rotating this rod. So the positive is the one down and you should turn it on very very slowly and read what the voltage is. So as I turn this on, you can see now it's around 15 kilovolt and this is also at 15 kilovolt at the moment. So the potential difference is 30 kilovolt in total. We have positive 15 kilovolt on the rotating electrode that uh, has the electrospinning solution and negative 15 kilovolt on the collector. You should increase the high voltage on both of these so they are more or less at the same level. So if you want in total 50 kilovolt potential difference, I suggest you to put 25 on the positive and 25 on the negative. So now we have 30 kilovolts. It might be enough for some polymer systems, but uh, for some you might need to go to 50 or even 60 or 70 kilovolts. So very slowly adjust and wait a few seconds, see if the electrospinning has started. Sometimes electrospinning also works better if the humidity is low and the temperature is high. So you can, for instance, flow nitrogen or dry air, and you can also adjust the temperature by this on the left. When you are finished with your electrospinning, you very slowly turn off the high voltage. You will hear the click when it's off. You should wait about two minutes for all the charges to go away. Okay, now we have waited two minutes. So we can uh, turn off everything and it will stop the motors, it will stop everything and then you can open your setup. So very carefully open this lid. If you find it too heavy then you can ask for some help. Once you remove the lid, before touching anything since it might still have some charges that might shock you, 
you should use a, a grounded cable to touch both the collector and the high voltage electrodes. You might uh, see some sparks between the ground and the electrode. Uh, don't be scared, it's normal. Then you put your hand and grab the Teflon rod while with some of your fingers you pull out the Teflon bath from the Teflon rod. You might need to also adjust the high voltage cable. Do it very slowly and make sure you don't break the high voltage cable. And then you will need both of your hands to grab the high voltage coil electrode and take the pick coupler off and then uh, pull off the high voltage cable. I usually rotate the peak coupler counterclockwise to remove it and then I remove the leftover paraffin and then you can simply sleeve off the loop from this. You can collect the electro spawn samples by taking off the aluminum sheet before you remove this. And at the end, you should dispose the leftover electrospan solutions, or you can put it back to the original bottle if you want to reuse it. I hope this uh, instruction video was clear. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.